Guys, our show sponsor, Raid, Shadow Legend just celebrated their third anniversary. It's been called the greatest mobile game of all time with over 600 legendary champions and it keeps getting better. An amazing new addition to the game is the Doom Tower. Sprawling over 120 levels, the Doom Towers brought exciting new challenges for seasoned players. Raid started with hundreds of unique characters and bosses and last year they added a whole new faction. The Shadowkin are a tribe of warriors from the Far East recently liberated from the reign of evil. And of course, no review can end without addressing the newest and biggest addition to Raid. I'm talking about the Hydra Clan boss. This monster has multiple heads, each with a different ability and requires a different strategy to destroy. Guys, now is the best time to get started. Click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen and you'll get a special birthday package worth $40. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. Help me out with one. Help me out emotionally. Tell me how I should feel. So Tony Ferguson has now called out Dustin Poirier. Great. Do you guys like the fight? Sure. Does that fight make a level of sense? Is that a fun one? Is that one that you've dreamed about somewhere over time and it's not too late? Let's get them together now. Probably. Probably to all of that. What about the other side of the coin where I submit for you, let's not get Tony a fight at all for a little bit. Let's get our calendars out. Let's mark 45 days on. Let's find 45 days. We put that in yellow. 45 days from now, we come back and revisit this whole conversation. Is that the better idea? I have never seen Tony working so hard as he's working right now. Never, never working for his career, never working towards getting better, never working at getting a big match, getting a match, making sure you're interested in something that turns out to be viewed. I mean, it's, it's one of these spots with Tony. And he's even spreading the butter all over the place. He wants to go up to 170 pounds. So then I would have to ask that question. In fact, it is the very question that I asked to my producer, Ryan, when he told me Tony Ferguson just called out Poirier. I said, was it for 155 pounds? He, my producer said, sure. So apparently it's not even set. Now I'm only proposing for you guys. Yeah, okay, that's an awesome fight. That fight does something for me. If both guys are coming off losses and somehow we're married to this policy that's never been a rule in the first place, but they are really big name guys and their paths haven't crossed and probably should have, and it's not too late. Okay. It is so glaringly obvious to me that Tony needs to be up at 170 and his next opponent is Nate Diaz. That is, that is so glaringly obvious to me, but I don't think that Tony and Nate, maybe, maybe those guys are buddies. Because neither, right, they, they both did the same art, both came through the same organization, they've certainly known each other for years, they geographically don't live that far apart, I've never seen them being chummy, but I've also never seen the opposite. Perhaps there's a level of respect and whatever nostalgic feelings it would give all of us to see Ferguson opposite Diaz, maybe there's more to that relationship, possibly. But what do you want to do all the same? The poor idea is a really great idea. The best and my favorite idea of anything I've heard Tony say, and Tony's thrown a lot out. He has thrown a lot of things at the wall in the last 14 days. But my personal favorite was 170 pounds. And that's just from a personal note, as a guy that did it, as it got a little bit older and I could take my full battle and all the dedication into beating that evil, awful opponent the day before known as the scale. And when I could start focusing and putting that energy into the opponent, life was just better. If you were in my inner circle, me being crabby as opposed to being pleasant, there was more times that I was pleasant as opposed to crabby. Right, the weight cut is just a, a real thing. I would really like for Tony to explore that. I also think we have to give some, some real resolve to the viciousness of the loss that was a TKO. I apologize, was a knockout. There's a number of things in our sport that get called, oh, he was knocked out. We'll see a, a boxer who's standing on his feet, but he's wobbling a little bit as the ref says 10. That gets called a knockout, and sometimes the guy's actually knocked unconscious. That's what happened to Tony, which is why I'm saying is that, do we need to go mark that 45 days? It's already been about you know, 10, 12, 15. And do we put a, another 45? I don't know medically how that's correct, but I know that there is an answer. I know that the commissions do take a look at that. I know there is brain scans. I know there is some paperwork. I know that's going to be handled just right. But are we doing this a little bit out of, out of order? Are we rushing Tony into something? 
I'm getting the sense that Tony is feeling a panic. I don't want that for Tony because he doesn't deserve it. Tony has been a top 10 guy for as many years as they've been doing the rankings. They've been doing rankings 11 years and he's been in the top 10 for 11 years. I don't think there has been anybody ranked longer of a period of time than Tony Ferguson. I'm just sharing with you, he still has that ranking even if you got to wake it up and hand it back to him. He is only taking on absolute lead the best guys. So he's going to be in timeout for a minute when he comes back. I don't want him, I don't want him feeling this urgency. I don't want him feeling as though his, his career is on the line. His ranking most certainly is not on the line. His spot in our industry is not on the line. His placement on the card, that being main card and or better, none of these things are about to be taken from him. But I'm not positive he knows that. I'm sensing a panic. I'm sensing an urgency from Tony like I've never sensed before. It's like, Tony, I don't know who got in your ear. But you put two guys out there, one guy wins, one guy loses. You put two guys in the top 10 out there, one guy wins, one guy loses, and it's usually badly. Everything's normal. If you want to fight Poirier, no problem. If you want to go to 170, give Chael's idea of you and Nate Diaz, no problem. But we need to buy some time. That's the one ingredient that we must have here. So keep these names going. And I want you guys to help too. I want to go read the comments. What did it do for you? Had two different options thrown out here for you. Tony threw out the idea of Pori. Leave me a comment. Is that the one? I'm throwing an idea out for you. 170, Tony, Nate Diaz. Where does that grab you? As you look inside and you start to get that an anticipation. There's nostalgia for all. These are veterans about. These are guys with limited amounts of walks left to the octagon. Career goes by very quickly. So if you had to do it right, and you got to do it next, Poirier, Diaz, Ferguson, one match, make it. I want to read your comment. 